thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, where in verses 23 and 24, we read of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, coming into a temple and being confronted by a man with demons and evil spirits within him. And these evil demon spirits cry out to Jesus, O Holy One of God, we know who you are. Today I wanted to speak a little bit about false conversion, false prophets, um, being careful of not being deceived as 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 tells us that we are to test the spirits and we are not to be deceived by everything out in this world. Many times in the Bible we are told of false conversions, people that put on an outward appearance that they were saved, but inwardly, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, they didn't serve the Lord from their heart. They had what's called lip service. They were worshiping God with their lips, but their hearts were far from the Lord. I often like to use the analogy of when we eat food. If you just chew the food in your mouth and just spit it out, but don't digest it, it's not going to do anything for you nutritionally, physically. And it's the same way spiritually. If we do not if we just chew on the food of God's word, but don't digest it inwardly and let it get into our heart, it's not going to do anything for us. We are told in James chapter 2, verse 19, that even the devils and the demons believe in God and shudder. When I first got saved in 1985 at the age of 19, I remember there was things called chick tracks. And... People would say to those in the street, well, if you just say the sinner's prayer or just say something or write something down, that you're automatically saved. Now, I do believe that there's a thief on the cross conversions where people at the end of their lives come to the Lord like the thief on the cross. However, we are told that a tree is known by its fruits. And it's not enough just to say a prayer. It's not enough just to say something, I accept Jesus with your lips. It has to be seen in the way you live your life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, that there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. As I was saying in this story in the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, this demon, evil spirit in this man was inside the temple. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will I acknowledge our Savior Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23 but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. We have to show that we are saved, not just by our lips, but we have to not just talk the talk, but we have to walk the walk. It is not enough just to do lip service to the Lord. It has to be evident in how we live our lives. We are told in James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26, that faith without works is dead. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith and not of works lest we boast, works that boast us. But in verse 10 of Ephesians 2, it says that God has appointed and ordained good works for us to do, good works that are going to glorify God. As Christ told us in Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16, we are salt, we are light, we are to let our light shine so that other people will see our good deeds, it says in Matthew 5, 16, and glorify God in heaven. So my friends today, let us remember, don't, don't believe everything you see and hear. There's many people proclaiming um, social justice gospels, especially in light of everything going on. And yes, we ought to stand up for the weak and the poor. However, and I say this respectfully, Romans chapter 2 verse 11 says that God is not a respecter of persons. In other words, all life matters to God. Recently, a TV commentator was suspended for saying that all lives matter. From the womb to the tomb, every life matters. We, and, and the bottom line is this, we have to be obedient to God and not man. As you see me oftentimes here on social media, I never really was one that wanted to get in front of a big audience and do this, but some Christian friends of mine encouraged me to do it. They felt they had a gift, and I've been blessed by God's grace and mercy these last few years proclaiming the word. But when I get on social media to talk about God 
you often hear me quoting the Bible as much as I can. A true person who is giving you the gospel of Jesus Christ it's not a name, name it and claim it gospel. It's not a prosperity gospel. It's not a social justice gospel. It is a gospel. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ, who came onto this earth to die for sinners. And we, me, and the chief of sinners, as First Timothy chapter one verse fifteen says, the apostle Paul told us that Christ came to die for sinners, and I was the chief. Paul said, Richard Joyce, my name is the chief of sinners. And that's why we come to the Lord as broken sinners. We don't come to the gospel looking to see what we can get out of it financially, politically. It discourages me at times when I see so many professing Christians so worried about the things going on in this world. We are told in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 that our citizenship is in heaven. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 tells us that we are to set our minds on things above. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 tells us that we are just pilgrims, sojourners, exiles here on earth. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven. Our mind should be focused on Christ in heaven. While we're here on earth, we should, we should be representing him here on earth. I have nothing wrong with voting. I vote. I encourage people to vote for not so much a person, but a political party that aligns with the gospel, biblical values as much as possible. We are not to idolize people or a politician. We are not to be worried about a social justice gospel. Many people who do good works and think they're doing good things here on earth will go to hell. We are not saved by our good works. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ and him alone, and that's what we need to proclaim. Many people today, as 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 say, says, many people have what's called itchy ears. They want to hear good things. They want to hear compliments about themselves and their causes here on this earth. We are not to give people itchy ears, but broken hearts that they come to Jesus Christ. And I'll end with this. Psalm 51 verse 17 says, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. God bless you all this day, my brothers and sisters. Read your Bible. Test every spirit out there. Not every spirit is from God. And look to Jesus Christ.